Right, welcome back, everybody. So the Sunday Times newspaper has reported that at least 20 Eastern Cape ANC members could be asked to step aside as part of the, clean, the party's cleanup. A document entitled Provincial Reports, Criminal and Provincial Cases has emerged. The report is apparently a synopsis of the cases of alleged fraud and corruption and contains the names and information of those to be told to step aside by the party from all of the nine provinces. Now, this report gives a brief background about each case and updates on the status of those cases to date. Now, unfortunately, we were meant to be joined by the ANC Eastern Cape Provincial Spokesperson, but unfortunately, we cannot get hold of him, so we're not sure what to, uh, what to make of it. We will continue to try and uh, get hold of Luiso uh, Matrachela, so that's the guest we were meant to be joined by. So, as I say, we'll keep on trying. But in the meantime, we also have with us Ongamem Tinka, who is a political analyst and a political studies lecturer at the Nelson Mandela Bay University. Ongamem thanks very much for... I mean, <laughs> Ongamem, I'm just joining your name and surname together. I've got something going for you there, Ongamem. <laughs> it's good to have you with us. Welcome. Good morning, Glenn, and your viewers. Thank you for having me this morning. All right. As you heard, unfortunately, we just can't seem to get hold of the uh, NC's provincial uh, spokesperson. Man, man, man. Yeah. Oh, uh, hold man, on. There man. we go. Okay. Looks like we're getting yeah. somewhere. So we'll, we'll, we'll try and sort all of that out and we'll, we'll bring him on air. It looks like we have managed to get hold of him. But, Mtinko, let me get you. What, it, what is your view on this report? So I think, Leanne, this signals a follow-through from the process that the president kick-started and was supported by the NEC. Uh, in fact, I think we had communication a few weeks before the, a week before the president's letter, where it was reported that, in fact, the, 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 the NEC had given this instruction that data must be collected from the provinces so that uh, the, the, the direct, this direction can be taken as to who must be asked to step aside and stuff. So that there is followed through and is a good sign that the relations between public pressure and how the ANC responds is in fact turning a new chapter as the ANC recognizes that if they fail to respond adequately to public pressure in terms of enforcing its own values, then they, they, they will may as well write the obituary of the party. Yeah. So I think that now, now that there's at least a follow through, uh, it hasn't resulted yet in people, uh, except Andy Delungisa, obviously, uh, and uh, uh, that we heard of and Sandy Lekumete. I know no other person that has been asked but it's a step in the right direction when the, the process is followed through without necessarily being blocked. Yeah. And this is, I mean, obviously we, we look at this, this particular process and we see that this is something that the president has come forward and said that anybody that is found or that is guilty must step aside. And he is non-negotiable on this. Is this the start of hopefully a lot more that we're going to actually finally be seeing things happening with regard to corruption, uh, illegal tenders, all of these kind of things. I mean, we have to start somewhere. So starting with PPE would be the most relevant, I imagine, now. Sure. So we must note a number of things here. First of all, the right of the party to protect itself from its own members and their reputational damages that they may inflict upon it. You will note that before this, there was too much power overly emphasized on party internal processes and structures. So, for example, uh, the ANC would say, in between conferences, it is only the NEC that can arrive at decisions, uh, or, in fact, uh, if we, with respect to a sitting president or an elected official, it is only the next conference that can deal with that person. But what that does was, was taking away the power that the organization has in order to protect itself uh, from its own members. What we are seeing now 
is that with with, with this action um, and also the new terminology of saying uh, if you have been accused that's enough to, for, to, to, to have you step aside depending on the guidance of the integrity committee. That's important in the ANC uh, uh, culture because this culture which was uh, innocent until proven guilty rhetoric uh, which, which, which signaled a cop-out and a failure to want to, to, to deal with political issues and in fact overly emphasizing legal, the, the legal processes to their comfort. Is, 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 we've, we've arrived at a stage where the public pressure itself has forced the ANC to come up with new ways in which it can, it, it conceptual, it, it, it proposes to deal with uh, cases or even if there are no cases but allegations which bring, which potentially could bring the party into disrepute. So that's what is different about this time. The fact that uh, the ANC is not comfortably choosing to say innocent until proven guilty, that's the end of the story. But rather, where its reputation is being damaged by allegations which not, may not have even been tested in court, uh, gives it still a, 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 an option to act. I think that's commendable. Whether or not it actually takes the action, that's something different. And I, do, I believe that it will still be subject to the power dynamics within the party. But uh, what the beauty about creating these processes is that it then becomes the basis upon which comrades internally uh, are being challenged you know, on questions of morality. And that's the biggest decline of the ANC in the democratic period, by the way. It's, it's, it's moral compass and the ability to come with leaders as described in its own documents around organizational renewal and through the eye of the needle. Yeah, I and mean, we already saw the SGA, Smachishule, saying he, he will never step aside because of corruption allegations, because he expects fairness and the application of justice. Give us your opinion, I mean, rega regarding something like this. Is it, is it unfair for an organization like the ANC to ask leaders to step aside in the name of integrity? Well, so here's the thing, and uh, 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 Leanne. One, the principle that if your allegations can bring the organization into disrepute, they are something the organization should be concerned about is one. The second one is that the organization has a right to ask you to step aside, okay? That there has been an, a, an agreement at the NEC about that. It means it's no longer the end of the story, the fact that a person has not been charged or found guilty. Uh, and then what's going to happen with uh, the defenses that Ace Mahashule is alleged to have said, which, all the, by the way, even in the press conference, he tried to advance that line. It's going to depend on what parameters that the integrity committee comes up with to determine what scale or what thresholds of a, a seriousness are going to apply for people to be asked to step aside to acknowledge their, their, their allegations and their reputational effects on the ANC, among other things. So once, so my argument is that the integrity community will need very quickly to come up with that framework of saying, what framework will we use to determine degrees of uh, seriousness and the extent of damages to the party's reputation. So they may say, for example, if there's a prima facie evidence that's out in the public domain about your allegations, and it's not just a spurious allegations that come from out of nowhere, you, un unless you've satisfactorily explained your position in a way that counterbalances whatever evidence may be emerging, even if it's not tested in court, then you, you, whether or not you stay is a function of how well the integrity committee thinks you have performed in answering those questions in a, satis in a satisfactory way. Otherwise, if the ANC is going to continue to hide behind innocent until proven guilty at a party political level, then it's going to uh, continue to, 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 to have behavior which militates 
against its own organizational values and people are not uh, 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 stupid sorry to use that word people are not stupid mm. they can read the uh, news for themselves and decide and for that reason they have been punishing the ANC in every electoral poll while it stuck its head in the set so I'm happy that now it is in a phase where it is opening itself up and not necessarily sticking its head, its head in the set. Yeah, uh, you know, we, we could talk f further and, and, and I want to. We do, I see, have our guest that uh, is from the Eastern Cape joining us. There's just two more questions I want to ask you and then um, I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, end our interview in Gama. But just in terms of having a look at the situation that's unfolding in the Eastern Cape, because there are a lot of names that have come through. There's this list doing the rounds. Uh, we, we, we know that there, there are a lot of issues plaguing that province when it comes to health care, when it comes to things that are going on within the province. And it, it's great worry. It's very, very worrying. Now there's this list coming out of leadership that may be involved in illegal tenders and in corruption. What do you make of the situation within the Eastern Cape? First of all, uh, corruption has been rampant here, uh, Leanne, and it's a big problem. You know, part of the reason why the state is not performing uh, well on different aspects of service delivery is not because there's no capability. Remember, we've got some of the top university, well, not top, but among some of the uh, good universities in the province that are producing people. And you will find that civil servants, for example, go and study further. And that culture is uh, really embraced here. So the challenge is not perhaps in capacity per se, but a culture of corruption that swindles resources out of the system where greed is over uh, 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 and, and, and national interest no longer driving. So, 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 so it's, a, it's commended. When I saw the list, I saw it was comprehensive enough. Uh, well, I, yeah, and also uh, that uh, the, 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 the big cases that are known uh, involving big names. Uh, uh, they are there and you see that people have answered in terms of the, the questions that, 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 that they were, po were posed by the Provincial Integrity Commission. Here is where I want to, to, to caution against is that the, the, the big power brokers... I do take in that the into account. All right, just so, finally... So Sorry, I, I, sorry. We have got such a bad line with you on gum. I'm, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. I hope our, I hope our viewers are, are able to hear you properly. Um, you know, just we, we have got with us Lu, uh, Luiso Matrasha. He's going to be speaking to us after the seven o'clock uh, news. So we'll be able to get his reflections on this and also just get a little bit of uh, feedback from him on this particular uh, story and also what of your, your analysis. There's just one final question on gum that I would like to ask you. And that's this issue of the ANC now coming out and saying that they may be unable to pay their salary bill or have not paid their salary bill for the month. What is happening financially now within the ANC? So that's the thing, uh, Leanne, with, uh, you know, acting in bad faith in terms of uh, uh, the public. It always comes back, and, I, and I, there's a cross-up proverb uh, to 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 that extent that you 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 see I mean you cannot understand it how people who are favored to do business with the state uh, because that's that's the that's what we've seen and that's the source of corruption is the NC itself that's why it's accused number one you cannot understand how it is failing to have monies uh, that can you know, uh, from its own comrades who are, who, are, who are in business, who can support the party. You know why? That's because mainly uh, money that is gotten from uh, uh, corrupt activities and other illicit activities never does any good generally. If you look at the pattern, you will find that people buy sports cars and all of those things. There's never any sense of a uh, greater than the self commitment uh, to those. So, uh, I think the ANC uh, is, is, is facing the brand of its own uh, arrogance. It's facing the brand of its own, uh, you know, a failure to manage uh, the state well. Um, and, and, and also, maybe, it may also even signal a, 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 the drying of the tap 
mm. uh, from those that, uh, who, 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 who would bankroll the party. Because the funding environment for organizations that demonstrate, you know, a, 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 an arrogance towards society would dry up. Okay. Ngama, let's leave it there for this morning. Uh, Ngama Mtimka, political analyst, just giving us a little bit of perspective of some issues that are plaguing the ANC at the moment, when it, whether it uh, comes to the ANC cleanup, which relates to the members being charged and others still investigated for possible inclusion in fraud and corruption, as well as a, a report that's come out saying that the ANC are unable to pay their salaries for um, some of their members and staff this uh, last month. So we will, of course, as I say, speak to the Eastern Cape after the news at 7. Do stay tuned. But right now, let's take a break. We'll have your stories of the day and trending topics as well as other regulars after this.